Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to another Calm Business Conversation. Now, today I have a super special guest, basically the inspiration behind all of this, you know. And so I want to actually st tell a little story uh, to start. So most of you in my audience know who's sitting right there, Susanna Conway. Uh, I started, when did you start blogging, Susanna? Um, 2006. 2006, okay. So yeah. I've been following you ever since then, you know, so because I used to be a blogger in, in those days as well and just blogging about life basically. And in 2015, I started my own business as a web designer. And then in 2016, you launched Inside Story. And uh, that is Susanna's, well, kind of business course, you know, where you give a glimpse behind the scenes of your business, how you grew it. Uh, and I'll let you introduce yourself, you know, to the few people who might not know who you are uh, in a moment. And now I was a web designer at the time, uh, but you also talked about, you know, creating online courses and teaching. And that is what inspired me to start my own online course, you know, in 2016. So that's when I did my first course um, called Squarespace 101. And it changed my life, you know, so talk about, you know, people inspiring you, you know, so Susanna, you've been a great inspiration for me over the years and, you know, and talk about people kind of changing your life, you know, and, and certainly in my business as well, you know, because since 2016, you know, I, I did both for a few years, you know, web design and courses. And then in 2019, it all became a bit too much. So I decided to only do online courses. And I now, you know, I have six online courses now. I have, you know, the elusive six-figure business, you know, have done that for the last five years. And it all started in the inside story. Now, the other thing that also happened out of the inside story is calm business, you know. So I took the revamped version of inside story last year. And I just want to share a screen here for a moment, um, just very briefly. And this is the slide that, you know, started basically Calm Business. Susanna was talking about, you know, her business being small because you want to feel calm. And I'll let you talk a little bit about that in a moment. And that was just like a light bulb moment for me. You know, I thought, oh, my gosh, yes, calm. I mean, that that's like my whole life has been about that. I just want to feel calm. And just from there, you know, I started then, you know, we talked in the course about freebies, you know, and that's how I came up with the Calm Business Review. And it really kind of snowballed from there, you know. And so now Calm Business is kind of a thing. <laughs> it's become a movement. It's very much about anti-hustle, you know, because we're not into hustle culture. And I think you and also I were good examples that you can actually have a successful online business and you do not have to subscribe to the hustle. Yeah. And so without further ado, uh, I give you Susanna. So for, like I said, for the few people who don't know who you are, you know, maybe introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about what prompted you to put that slide up. Oh my God. Well, I am a writer and a course creator. I started my business in 2009 after a few years of blogging um and I taught it, it all started because I ran an evening class locally here in the UK and of course I blogged about it and people were saying oh I want to come along as well but I'm in America I can't um and a friend suggested I why don't you try and do it online and back in 2009 there were a few e-courses e existing um, but it, it wasn't anything like it is now I mean now it's this multi-billion dollar industry and back then it was considerably smaller. So I cobbled together my little sales page, which was like this teeny tiny <laughs> one page thing I made. And I sent it out and some people signed up. And by the end of the first week, I think I had 100 people signed up. I think because it was this new frangled thing, people were excited, something different, something we can, you know, get together and, and indulge ourselves and have fun and do something creative. Wasn't so, it by email too? Didn't wasn't it like an email course? It was no, was it, it? it was so my first course was, was unraveling. And in the end, I ran that course like 18 times. 
But that first incarnation, I had it on a password protected blog. That's right. Yeah. On oh my god, what was the name? Type uh, type. What was type it called? Type pad. Yes. <laughs> I ran it on type pad. I gave everyone the password so they could go in there, and then we had a Flickr group. So we could all share our photographs. Look up. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, I mean, we took an old school and I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew that the, the evening class that I had run in person went really, really well and was quite profound in its own way. And we weren't learning how to take photographs. We were taking pictures of ourselves and our lives and sharing them in this group. So I made that into an online version um, and that was the beginning of everything. And I, I didn't know I was going to be online educator, if you like. I mean, I studied photography. I studied journalism. I was a freelance journalist for a while. I worked for a couple of national newspapers here back in the day. Um, but when my life kind of imploded in my early 30s, I was set off on a different path. So all of the creativity was already there, the writing and the photography, and then the internet caught up with me so that by the time I started blogging, I was kind of inadvertently growing an audience, a bit of an audience. So when I had this thing to, to create for them, and it was very much off the back of people asking me to do it, you know, like now it feels like, you know, there are courses teaching you how to do it and it's all, everything's monetized and, you know, it's a business and that's cool. How amazing to be able to make money that way. But when I started, it really was because I had people asking me, I want to do it as well. Can you make it for us? You know, it was it was very organic and very lovely. Um, and amazingly, I'm still doing it today. I can't I can't really wrap my head around that. Because I remember that first year, I just kept thinking, oh well, this is a fluke. You know, it's not, it's not gonna, you know, if I run it again, no one's gonna sign up. Um, and that wasn't the case at all, you know. So not. yeah. Well, Listen, and and you've you've amazing. been teaching all the things you know that like tarot I mean I took I, I probably have most of your classes actually you know I I took your tarot class and you know and I think just the way your classes evolved and you know how it, again it grew so organically you know and yeah. it's almost like from the outside it always looks almost like effortless you know uh, but we know that behind the scenes that is not always the case right well it's Oh, look who's here. I was hoping we would see her. Yeah, hi. <laughs> this oh. is Baba, everyone. She's still here. Yeah, right. is Baba. <laughs> so it was totally organic growth. And because I because there was no plan to this business, I didn't know it was going to be a business. I mean, like I said, I thought it was a fluke. Did this first class um and then did run it again. And I mean I had a I had a point where I had 150 places in the class and it would sell out in 10 minutes and people were emailing me annoyed that they couldn't get a place that I mean this is like the early days of internet did you already TV. have a mailing list at that point no I, well I started it after the I think the second class I was like right well I need to get a mailing list because I need to be able to tell people you know when enrollments are coming and back then my my newsletter they weren't newsletters that were well, actually that's not true they were kind of newsletters but no chit chat it was just very you know just information um, but yeah, I've been writing the newsletters for years and years and years. I was looking I at them notes. this morning. So yeah, so many. It's been um, like 12 years or even oh, more. Oh, it's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, amazing. So I started with this one e-course and then I'm like, okay, well, what's going to come after that? Well, I need to replicate this. So I created a second unraveling or was it, was it my exploring the senses? Something that I thought would be a nice follow-up to that course. And then because we'd been doing photography and people were asking me about, you know, could we do more into the actual taking of pictures? I then developed my photography course. And then from there, people were asking me about, well, I want to get into blogging. How did you do that? I made a blogging course and it kind of went from there. So each has linked to the, the one before it. And it's it's been very organic in that way. And I've never had a year where I just thought, oh, my God, what am I going to do? What am I going to create? There are reasons for that, which we will get into. My brain is constantly coming up with new things. It's like a never-ending, perpetual thing. Um, but, yeah, everything has moved into the next one. I did the inside story because people were emailing me, oh, can I just pick your brain? You know, how do you do this? How did you do that? How did you blah, blah, blah? 
And I'm like, well, do you know what? I think I might need to make a little course about this to share, not because I'm like Mrs. Business, because I'm really not, but I can share how I've done it in my way. And if people can see themselves in me in some way, then it will be helpful because, you know, I'm not the shiny hair biz person at the front of the room doing all that. I'm never going to do that. I hate all of that. I don't hate it, but I don't, it's not me. And I'm very clear and I know who I am and what I'm capable of and what I want to do and what I don't want to do. And I I think I've been that all the way along, really. But the the further I get into my business, the, the clearer I am about what I don't want to do. Like that's 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 what's changed everything. So in a way, that's where the calm stuff has come from. Calm has always been the one word out of all the words that I desire. I just want to feel calm. And th- this has always been the case. But since my ADHD diagnosis last year, I now know why. <laughs> oh, and of course, that's what I want. Because I have 15 radio stations playing in my head at all times. You know, like there is there is never a quiet moment. I, I went for an official diagnosis. So the story so what, was, made you, what made you, so I, I want to talk about this, you know. Because, you just like get into the nitty gritty? I, well, okay. ADHD is, is, you know, is such a buzzword these days. So how, how did you well, first suspect that you yeah. might, uh, well, do you say have it or that you might? What do no, we I, do? I am neurodivergent. Basically. Oh, okay. It's, exactly. it's not something you catch. It's not, exactly. it's not a disease. It's a way of being. It's a, a differently programmed brain, basically, yeah. different wiring. Um, I have a friend who was diagnosed with it easily a couple of years ago. And I remember going, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes so much sense for you. Didn't even occur that to me that it could be me as well, because I still had the old fashioned way of looking at it. Yeah, but it's just little boys jumping around in a classroom. So that is that that's been the sort of standard idea of what it was. And I've as I've researched and learned, it's only really in the last 10 years that this current diagnosis has existed because before it was ADD and then there's been other names and it's, you know, it's evolving as I guess they're understanding what this is and it's linked into autism and dyslexia and dyspraxia and all the different neurodivergent things that there are. Um, And there's no like one perfect brain and one shit brain. (laughs) That's not a thing. It's not a thing. We are all on different bits of this looping thing you know so that was good to fight to figure out and then obviously through the pandemic everyone's been addicted to tiktok and they're all like adhd no you haven't you're just exhibiting normal human behaviors so what makes adhd a thing is when you have had these behaviors and um i want to say symptoms but that's not the right word traits behaviors and traits but you've had them since childhood and you have them to such a degree that they interrupt and make your life more difficult that they are chronic so it's not oh fuck I forgot my keys oh no it's not that oh no I forgot to do that no it's that it's 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 more there are more layers to it and that's what I've understood because when I watched a video on YouTube and it was all about how normal productivity advice is toxic for people with ADHD I can't remember how I landed on the video, but I'm like, oh, go on then. I was in bed on my iPad, you know, half 11. I'll just watch one more. And I watched it. I thought, hang on. Oh, that more. That's like everything you just said is kind of how I work. What does that mean? So, of course, I fell down the hole and had to figure out let, online test. What's that? Going? Watch more videos, find a book, and then got pretty convinced it was the evidence was pretty conv- compelling that I also had ADHD. So I paid for a private consultation and obviously rang around, found somewhere that I felt was reputable. There's been a bit of chat lately. I think the BBC just did a, like an expose of some private clinics here in the UK that are, char- you know, diagnosing wrong or I don't know, making it sound like a bit of a scam. So of course that's not, that's not what you want to be hearing when you're going for a diagnosis. Anyway, but found one that felt good. I think I had to fill out a couple of questionnaires, like at length. I had to get my a fam- couple of family members to fill out questionnaires just to sort of get a really good picture of my mental health and the past and 
everything. So I sent thousands of words because I had written so many notes in my Notion page, sent them all over, had the thing. I think it was about an hour and a half consultation on Zoom. And the the psychiatrist, he did it really well, actually, now I look back, because he was just sitting there asking me questions. And while he's getting the information from me, he's also observing me, observing my behavior, observing how I talk, you know, and all the little bits and pieces. And when I look back on it, I was just fidgeting around, <laughs> just as I normally am. But it's it's quite funny because he sends sends me the report. He told me uh, at the end, he's like, Miss Conway, you have you definitely have quite a high severity of ADHD. You've done so well to create all that you have. Because I talked him through all the ways I run my business, how I try and remember things. I was showing him all my post-it notes and my 50 journals and, you know, and he got a really good understanding of how I make it work. And he says, intelligence isn't a sign of, of having it or not having it. Like everyone at every level of possibility can have ADHD. So it's not that, you know, I'm so high functioning. It's not that everyone has it in a different way. So there isn't one size fits all. And that's when you do have a, a, a name for it. You're like, I mean, attention, what's it? Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Deficit is the yeah. wrongest possible word because it's not that I can't focus. It's that my brain focuses on everything. Yeah. <laughs> so I am thinking about things at five levels deep. When I'm talking to someone, I've already anticipated what they're going to say and I'm half a mile down in the conversation you know like my brain works really quickly how much that... we meet at the very end of this year now <laughs> so, it's just there's so much always going on but it's one of the nice parts of that is high creativity because my brain is constantly jumping around and making connections yeah. this is where I think so much of my business has come from because I'm very creative um but also I've had to find ways to to get things done. And I honestly didn't think there was anything wrong with me, you know, and not that ADHD is wrong, I now know. But I, I never could have thought that I'm not jumping around. I'm not the the fidgety boy at school. I didn't have any of that. And no, that's not me. And look at me, I'm really, I'm quite successful that surely it's not ADHD. Well, yes, it is. And actually, I'm quite proud of it now because it doesn't feel like a label. It is an explanation. And it has been a gift to know. That's the thing. It's not that, I mean, I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. I don't mind telling people at all. And actually, I'm quite glad to bring a bit of awareness to it. Because it's not just that I'm fidgety. My fidgety actually is in my brain. I overthink. My diagnosis was a combined type of ADHD. So I have the inattentive, which means I can be very inward. So I can be still, but there's a million things. So I'm not as fidgety as I thought I could be, but I also do have a bit of the hyperactivity, but it's mainly hyperactive thinking. I can talk quite fast. I'm always twiddling my hair constantly. I will get up and down to go to the kitchen 50 times, you know, all of this stuff. Um, but what fascinated me was there are so many pieces of it that I had no idea were linked to this stuff. Like I've always called myself, well, when I found the word, HSP, highly sensitive person. Yeah, I know you have that on your site. Well, it turns out that is a very large and common symptom trait of ADHD because our brains are so tuned in with what's going on. Like for me, my biggest one is sound. Like I hear, I'm like freaking Spider-Man. I can hear everything. But because of that, There'll be things that I'm hearing I don't even realize, but they are sending in anxiety because my brain's like, what's happening over there? What's that? What's that? And I'm like, no, I'm trying to work, man. And it's that's going on. Someone's coughing. Someone's making a noise. Something's happening over there. I hate my neighbors because they're making noise. And it's all coming in. I don't have the ability to tune it out. So it's not attention deficit. It's attention overload. My sister, who is also has ADHD, also, of course, of course, we're the same. Um, for her, it's smell and taste, a really difficult senses for her because it's so acute for her that she she can struggle with food and something smells weird or it's it's a lot. We also have different things that can be um, comorbidities, co comorbidities, I think the word is, anxiety. 
Oh, I see D. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm sorry, sorry. My computer just did something weird. Um, I don't know what it did. It just cut out the sound. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, Zoom just changed my um, audio on me. Okay. Do you want to ring back? Okay. No, now we're good. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what happened. You know, it just stopped you. Either. Okay, comorbidities. Let's pick up. Comorbidities, yeah. So anxiety, depression, OCD, you know, all of these things, which are actually kind of um, in the neurodivergent spectrum in a way, as to, I think. I think that's right. You can also have those. So I do have depression or I have had depression. I am depression prone. Um, there's OCD in the family. Like these things, it suddenly starts making sense. So my HSP was actually part of my neurodivergence. So yeah, I am super sensitive to light, to the sensation of clothing. It ha everything has to feel right, but it but it infuses into everything. And I learned that, oh my God, this is why I hate cooking because my executive dysfunction, that, that doesn't work very well. And I will spend all day fluffing about. Like, I don't even know what I do sometimes. Like my tarot cards and my journals and then blah, blah, blah do all these things until I get to six o'clock. And then finally I've built up enough dopamine that I can get on with what I, the newsletter I wanted to write, you know, and it can take me all day to get genned up enough to then be able to do it. That has been my experience of working always. I did my homework the night before, always last minute, but that was when all the cells in my brain lined up so I could do something. I even talked about this in the inside story, you know, like I said, what is that when you, you do everything at the last minute, but that's when I have absolute focus and that will make me really burnt out, but I can do two weeks solid of working, but then it will take me six months to get my brain back in order again. So I've learned that I have to work with what I'm able to do. And having the ADHD diagnosis has been amazing because now I know why everything feels so hard and why I do these things and why I do that and why I can get really hyper, but then I will be exhausted because I'm still an introvert, but I can be hyper. Like, what's that? And oh my God, the revelations have just been coming at me nonstop. And there's there was an absolute grieving period where I thought, fuck, no wonder this happened and that and, and that and oh my goodness. And why I was so misunderstood and you know, just constant and how different could my life have been if I'd have known? And because like I said, it affects everything. It's not just, oh, I need a, a long to-do list. It affects everything. It affects how I live, where I live. You know, I'm always plagued by noises and makes my sleeping worse. And because my brain's always on, it's not something I can shut off. It is, it's like saying, I want to take all the veins out of my body. You can't take it out. This is how I am. Um, and unfortunately, I'm not able to try medication yet because um, I've got some heart stuff going on. I only found out because I wanted to try the medication and, you know, I had to go and have an ECG and, you know, check in with my overall health. So that's not an option. But what that means is I can look at, OK, well, what things do work? What I mean, a simple thing like I hate exercise. You know, like I could, I will impulsively build a website in three weeks, which is what I've done recently, but I cannot get myself to go out of the house and go for a walk. Like it's such a struggle or I can't decide what I'm going to wear and I'll sit here for an hour in stillness because my brain's working out, you know, like they do in the films with 50 equations. And it's that it's so annoying because you're like, well, just, just do it. Just get on with it. I wish I could, you know, I really want to. Um, so what my sister and I are doing now is a couple of mornings a week when she's dropped the kids off at school, we get on the phone. She walks around the countryside because she lives way out of London. I walk around the streets of West London and we talk. So we're chatting away. She's my favorite person to talk to. So we talk for an hour while we're walking and layering these things together helps me do things like the benefit of co-working on Zoom. Oh my God. So helpful. So helpful. So I've been, you know, getting my friends, right, let's get on Zoom. Let's work together. I have a couple of ADHD friends. Really helpful because we're both like, right, well, we're scattered. So let's get on Zoom and we'll support each other. I think just seeing it mirrored back to you 
helps my brain. I don't know how it works, but it is it's actually really effective. I've tried timers. I've tried the Pomodoro. I did it for a couple of days and then I forgot. You know, another thing that I have is if I, if I can't see it, it doesn't exist. Now, this is a really annoying trait, symptom, because it's it's not just things that I own. It's also people. Um, and now I know. I'm like, oh, OK, that's why I can be such a shit friend, because I'm not. But if I, if I don't see you, I forget that you exist. And now I can explain that to people. <laughs> it's quite amazing. But the same goes for things like I will go through a drawer and be like, oh, my God, I forgot. I and it's like finding a stationery store because everything in there I forgot that I bought because if I can't see it, it doesn't exist. Bizarre. Bizarre. There are every day there is a new weird neurodivergent thing that I discover and I phone my sister and she's like, oh, my God, me too. But then she has a few differences. Like I said, not everyone is the same, but there are enough commonalities to just make it funny. Oh, my God, it's funny. Some of the stuff, I'm like, I can't believe I didn't know. <laughs> I cannot believe I am so textbook. I just thought I was really quirky and a bit shit. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been, a, can you tell? It's been a lot. Uh, it's-, it's been a lot. I know. Well, and you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm actually trying to, you know, like I found when I do these videos, like if I constantly sit here and nod and nod and nod, you know, I become like this puppet, you know, like the little dog with the wagging head, you know, so I actually try to stay still yeah, it's hard, you know, isn't it? because yeah. I just want to go like, yes. Oh my gosh. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, um, I mean, everything you just said and, and I, I mean, it's, it's the weirdest thing, you know, because I, I mean, I've been, you know, certainly since you started talking about ADHD and then, you know, you share things and other people share things. And to me, it almost feels like my whole online world. I mean, everyone has ADHD now and, um, and I don't know, you know, but so many times I, I read things and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, you know, me too, me too. And certainly when you started talking about it and also throughout your life and how you've been coping and how you've been high functioning, but I, you know, I mean, I, and we briefly talked about this before, you know, I resist labels. I hate labels, but I can totally see how something like this, I mean, it's not a label, you know, it's actually a, an explanation, as you said, you know, yeah. it's something that can help you understand, oh, this is why I do things the way I do them. This is a legit thing. I'm actually not crazy, you know, and it's empowering. Yeah, exactly. You are empowered to yeah. find ways to help yourself, yeah. to have even more understanding. I mean, the journey for me was finding the word introvert all of those years ago, then finding HSP, getting closer, and now ADHD. I'm like, okay, now I now I have this incredible depth of understanding that even last year I didn't have. It's, I mean, it's amazing. And I always want to know. I want to figure this stuff out. Um, and it explains why I run my business the way I do, why I want a small business. I have one other person who works for me and then, you know, occasional contractors as and when. But I don't want to have a business that's so big I have to hire an office or rent an office space. Like, manage the team and manage. Oh, my God. I want to be at home in my own little world yeah. doing it my way. I would always want to do it my way. But the nice thing now is I can say to someone – like my bookkeeper, I can say, well, look, I've just got diagnosed with ADHD. That explains why it's such a struggle for me to get these certain receipts to you when you're asking for them. So what would be what's going to work really well? Can you just give me a definite day when you need them? Because before she'd say, oh, I need these, but there was no ending point. And I'm like, well, that's never going to happen. And then I feel shit about it. And then I forget. And then it's stress. And then there's guilt and, and all of that. So once I had the diagnosis and understanding, I'm like, tell me the date you want it, because that's going to be the day I do it. So she says, I need it on the 20th. I do it on the 20th because it is in my calendar. And just things like that help. And it's having that extra bit of communication with another person. I've explained it to Nita, my lovely, beautiful virtual assistant. No, she's not virtual anymore. She's, she's just she's my other person. And, and when I told her, she laughed. She's like, well, yeah, you're ADHD. I'm like, why didn't you tell me? I didn't know. But because this 
it doesn't feel like a label at all. It feels like freedom because now I, I love that. Yeah. And now I can help myself even more. And I'm amazed that I've created a business around myself, unbeknownst to me, that actually supports the way I work. I was I hated being in an office. I hated being caged. I hated having to stay there. And also now, whenever I'm looking at someone's teaching, I'm like, well, you have to have a few categories ticked here. Are you an introvert or are you an extrovert? Because if you're teaching me extrovert ways, it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. And then are you neurotypical or are you neurodiverse? Because I'm suddenly finding neurodiverse uh, entrepreneurs with their biz teachings, you know, I've got a few bits and bobs. And I'm like, oh my God, you're talking my language. You know, and all of them seem quite chaotic <laughs> and a bit hyper. And I'm like, oh yeah, you're my people. And we have a similar sense of humor. And I'm like, because as soon as someone is neurotypical and it's like, well, you want to, you know, do this and then we do it that way. And I'm like, no, mate, I cannot. I, I don't understand what you're saying. It's not going to work. That's why so many of the courses I've bought over the years, I mean, there weren't that many because I, I figured it out quite soon. But the the one I bought when I started out, 2009, I can't remember what it was called. I talked about it in the inside story. This remember that, yeah. marketing course run by like two white men in their white men ways. And I, I didn't do a single bit of it. And I think I paid like a thousand dollars. And I didn't do a, but their marketing was so convincing. I'm like, well, who am I? I clearly I need this course. And then I got it. And I'm like, oh, that huh? it, it was hideous. I mean, I'm sure it was good, but it wasn't for me at all. So now I've had these little filters that I can put in place to is this gonna be helpful to me? Is this something I want in my business? Is this even the way I do things? So I think having this understanding of how you work from introvert or extrovert, like the Myers-Briggs test, you could do the Clifton Strengths test. There's, it's just really useful information because I think when you first come into business, it's like, well, I've got to do it this way and I've got to do what that person says. Otherwise, it's going to fail. And it's like, that's not true. What you have to do is just find what works for you and you're going to get there a lot quicker if you understand how you work. Yeah. So knowing neurodivergence, oh, amazing, yeah. amazing. And, and, and it's been that's... so it's been so underdiagnosed, especially oh, yeah. in women. So that's why we're suddenly seeing it everywhere. Well, it's, and it's... adult ADHD, right? Because oh, especially we just well, associate thought... with kids. Yeah. You know, they thought our oh, kids just get it, they grow out of it. Yeah. Um, no, you don't no. actually. <laughs> you, don't. you just get shamed and think yeah. there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Girls, especially, are underdiagnosed, especially of my generation and, and before, because we tend to have a more inward looking, um, inattentive version of it, which means that the hyperactivity is internal. But because we're very good at masking, being the good girl. All of that shit. Thanks, patriarchy. Um, we, we hide it better. You know, we'll still get the grades, but no one will see that we're falling apart because we can't focus or do this thing. Or we'll find ways to look after ourselves better because girls are encouraged to do that. Whereas boys are rewarded for jumping around and being more athletic, for example. So you can see how, and also, I mean, most of the tests were just done on boys, of course. You know, they didn't think to do it on girls. Oh, just all of it. So that's why we're I mean, suddenly seeing it now. That's there, what. Yeah, there, there's a whole, oh, my gosh, you know, it's it's a Pandora's box, basically, you know, and yeah. once you open yeah. it, you know. But yeah. I, I find, you know, I, I and I think maybe that is also why I see so much of it, because I think, you know, the Internet and actually our ability to run online businesses now is that that is probably why so many people that we see have you know how get diagnosed with ADHD because that's what we do we're naturally drawn to something like this we're naturally yes. drawn to running a business that we can actually run on our own terms yes. i mean i spent decades working in the corporate world and hospitality i mean oh i mean this is actually what someone said to me the other day. How many times have you moved, Kirsten? Uh, 35. How many jobs have you Oh, my God. I mean, dude. <laughs> at, least, at least as many. How often have you moved around furniture in your house? I, as a kid, as a kid, I we lived in a small one-and-a-half-bedroom house, me, my two siblings, and my mom, so four of us. And even in that small, not, not house, apartment, 
in, in Cologne in Germany. And I had made a, a map of our um, of our apartment and I cut out furniture into scale so that I could move them around before I started rearranging them. And I would rearrange. On, it's amazing. My mom let me do that, actually. I rearranged yeah. furniture all the time. And, you know, so all of these things, you know, it's yeah. it, it's just you will start, the revelations are going to start rolling in. And I, yes, it's very common for entrepreneurs to have ADHD or to be neurodivergent in some way because our brains work at a different sort of level. You know, we're making these connections. We're more inventive. We're more creative. That's the lovely side of it. You know, obviously there's quite a long list of shit things that I am frustrated with in myself and that make life feel so much harder. But, you know, and I would like to try the medication, but I may not be able so to. What is, but, what is the medication supposed to do, though? That part, I haven't, I mean, I haven't done any research into that, but what is it, it supposed to do? It wakes up the bit of your brain that you need to be online. So there is stimulant medication and non-stimulant. A stimulant's the more controversial, you know, blah, 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 you shouldn't take it if you haven't got it and all of this stuff. And and you'd think, well, if you're hyperactive or you're, you're like that, why would... The way it works, as far as I understand it, is it wakes up that bit that is not online. The bit that I'm like spending all day. Come on, I just, I just need, fo- I just need focus and quiet. So having the stimulant wake that up brings that focus and quiet. So you'd think it would be the other way around. That's what I originally thought. That's not the case. Okay. It wakes it up the bit that's not working, the bits that's not wired enough to give me that that focus and quiet because everything's just and it just brings it into alignment it's not a permanent fix there's no cure you can't cure your veins so that's not a thing um but to have that focus I was like oh my god if I could have that like three mornings a week imagine what I could get done rather than needing a whole week to do something I could do it in three mornings you know things just take so long and I want to do it, but my brain's like, no. And I'll be like, I'm able to do that. And then I'll go to the kitchen. Then I'm cleaning out a cupboard. And then I come back as like, what was I doing? Oh, my gosh. But yeah. this has been my whole life. I know. I if know. I, Start one oh. thing and then there's all these unfinished projects everywhere, you know, yeah. because yeah. it's, uh, yeah. Because well, 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 I don't have to do a deep dive. So it's like I got into needle felting last year. I remember I bought, that, yes. I bought so much wool. It's embarrassing. <laughs> and I did it. I was obsessed for a month. And then I'm like, I can't do this anymore because I was staying up at night doing it. And it was stopping me from working because I was obsessively doing it. And I'm like, I've got to stop. So I had to completely stop and dropped it because I got so obsessed with it. But I'm, I've got you. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm, I really love my Blythe dolls and really got obsessed with that. Oh, my God, I've got to have all the dolls. And oh, but there are some things that I've got obsessed with that have remained like my journaling. I started when I was 11, still doing it, and I'm 50. You know, like I I, that has never gone away. A coping mechanism. I, I reckon the journaling is actually perfect oh, yeah. for Getting a neurodivergent brain, out. you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and this is it. This is about this with the 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 the, the big noisy brain also helps me, you know. Like I have found solutions even without knowing that I needed them. You know, I will, I've got my, oh, I've got it here. Seeing as we're doing this on video, like this is my junk drawer journal. Okay. And this is where I do all my workings out and I have stickers and colors and washi tape. And I've got all my millions of post-it notes. I had to figure out um, when I was going to run my next course, a new course that I'm making. And I was trying to figure out like, when am I going to run it? And then when's that going to be? And then, but I need to, I'm doing this interview and I couldn't see it. And I'm looking at my online calendar. I, I, just, I was like, I've got nothing. And I had to draw a calendar in my notebook and put post-it notes on and just have, make it tangible <laughs> so I could do it. What am I doing? But, that, but then I figured it out. I was like, oh, cool. Well, so I, I just think- work with what I can do. Yeah. And and I think there are, I mean, there, there have been studies, right? You know, where, you know, when you handwrite something, it, it activates different parts in your brain, exactly. you know, so by basically exactly. using your hand and using something tactile, like a pen and paper, as opposed to using, you know, a digital, um, you know, medium, it, it really, it helps, you know, that is why I, I think, you know, I feel also so passionate about 
retaining that, you know, I mean, let's not all just get to our keyboards and forget these things, you know, like handwriting. I mean, I love, it's funny when, when I, when I took your last uh, course on journaling and you talked about the different uh, pens and all this, and I actually, you know, I got my, um, I remembered, oh, I have all these like fountain yes, pens queen. and yes. I hadn't used them in a while. And I thought, <laughs> shit, you know, and that, so they were really scratchy. The ink wasn't flowing. So I actually Googled what it. What are those? Quebecos? Yeah, they are Quebecos, you know, so you can actually just clean them. So you can just yeah. like run hot water through them. So I did that and now it's working perfectly. And then I spent the next week, like every moment I had, I, d I didn't even know what to write about. I just wanted to write. I just wanted yeah. that tactile yeah. sensation and because it was so oh, smooth and so nice and that is what i do let me show you at the back of my my notebook i do i don't write anything i'm just constantly scribbling yeah like yeah. nothing this this isn't journaling this is just feeling the yeah. joy of the pen on the paper exactly it's calming it's, it's calming. Totally calming i mean it's, yeah. it's amazing you know and oh, but i love them i love them but analog life for life you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, cards, my washi tape, my stickers, my pens, and it's colorful, it's playful, it's joyful, it makes me happy. I'm surrounded, you can't see it in this video, but I'm surrounded by books and journals and all of it. You know, I'll have to take a picture so you can insert it because it's, but, and I can see it. So I don't forget that I have it. And so I use it, you know, it's, not, it's so simple. But knowing that that was a thing, I'm like, oh, okay, that's my house isn't messy. I just need to see things. Yeah. You know, if I'm going to, if I need to do this task, I need to have it in front of me or I need to keep the thing in my hand so I remember. And and knowing that I need to do that is really helpful because now I'm aware of, of how my brain works. I'm noticing when I forget things. I'm noticing when I do things and don't realize I've done them. A few times I've locked the front door and haven't had any awareness of it and have gone back to lock the front door. And I'm like, oh my God, <gasps> what happened? And it's the spookiest thing because I have no short-term memory or a very poor short-term memory, which is part of this. And yet my brain can, I have the most insane dreams and I always have, but I can, my brain can reconstitute the most extraordinary things from 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And I relive it. Like I live a second life at night. Again, part of the hyperactive brain thing. And so little pieces like that as well. Oh, so the sleep is part of it. And the hyperactivity is part of it. And when I meet someone new, I have to be terribly funny. And you would think I was an extrovert, but that's part of it as well. I'm really impulsive. I buy things. I get into it. Just, I don't have enough fingers and toes for all of the things I realized were down to being neurodivergent. <laughs> How did I not know? Oh my God. Do you think, do you think oh if you had known sooner, do you think like, for instance, when you were still in school and let's say, you know, they had school psychologists and we were actually just doing as part of, you know, growing up, do you think that would have made a difference to your life knowing it sooner? It's difficult to say because I grew up, I was at school in the eighties so we didn't know Jack back then. So I don't know, because I did I did okay at school. Um, it would have been more useful to know, maybe know then, and I don't think anything would have changed, but it would have been helpful to know in my 20s, because that's when I was in the longest relationship I've had. Um, that would be together for 10 years. And there was a lot of, I just, I'm obviously in part of my grieving through having the diagnosis, I'm remembering instances and times when the words, what the fuck is wrong with you, were thrown at me. Um, and I'm remembering stuff like that. And, and that's quite hard because I'm like, now I know. I can tell you why I'm like this or why I got obsessed with that or, you know, quirky, weird things. And, you know, now I know. And obviously now I'm fully accepting and I love myself, you know, in the best possible way. Like I know how shit I can be and and I know the past and I know it all. And I've done a lot of work to just fully embrace this very flawed uh, woman. And, and you're in a child, right? You know, oh my God. I, think... I mean, that's been like the final. Yeah. Tell us, tell me a bit know? more about that. Well, I mean, I've done inner child work off and on throughout the years. 
you know, when I lost my partner in my early 30s, I had a, a lot of therapy, of course. And, um, yeah, I mean, that was a really, that was a hard time. That was a really hard time. And that's when the unraveling began for me because I was pretty unaware in my 20s. I had a lot of trauma from childhood that needed to be unraveled and I didn't know at the time. Also with the neurodivergence, I now understand. So in my in my 30s, when I went through my years of therapy, I found it really hard to connect with younger me because I had so many bad thoughts about her and what she'd done or how she was, or I found it really hard to connect so there was a lot of work to be done there, a lot of work sort of integrating younger me. It wasn't this concept of inner child. I mean, there are obviously different ways of looking at it, different, um, I don't know what the words are, different books, different psychiatrists talking about it, different theories. And I, I don't know all of the standard book, smart, traditional ways of doing it. But I know that your inner child can be thought of as being the the broken bits of you, you know? And we have this, the, our younger selves stay within us. They kind of don't grow up. And we just amass all of these selves. You know, my 20-year-old's still in there, as well as my eight-year-old. So the, she's in there. Um, and she's kind of like this foundational programming that I have. And I know that the inner child can express itself with rage or depression or, you know, some bad stuff. So we can look at the inner child that way. But as I've grown older through the years, I've come to understand my inner child as I've healed all of that stuff to the best of my ability. I'm now viewing my inner child as like this little pixie that lives inside me. And she's connected to younger me. I kind of see her around eight years old. And I mean, when I was eight years old, I was was quite a screwed up little kid (laughs) coming into into my teens. You know, there was there was stuff. There was stuff. But the essence of the inner child for me is this, well, for me, Susanna, pixie energy. For someone else, it could be different. But I see her as this playful part of me that feels very real now. And I started connecting with her in 2020, like the, it was the second lockdown here in London, bought a tarot deck, which I do often. Um, yeah. I've got a lot. But I bought one that was kind of cheesy, and but I was obsessed with it, of course. So I bought this deck, realized it was more for my inner teenager, because there was a part of me going, Oh, this is great. And it was like really purple. It was like some sort of white I snake. It. I have it. I know which one yeah. you mean. Yeah. Oh my god, I just loved it. I was like, Oh my god, it's so bad, but I love it. But I realized it was a younger part of me that loved it. Like my 19-year-old self was all over it. Anyway, so that got me thinking, well, what would an even younger version of me like? Okay fell down that rabbit hole, bought a million decks and found myself making a tarot journal of meanings for all of the different cards, you know, the 78 cards in a tarot deck, but through the eyes of little Susie, which is little me, and had a blast, bought a million stickers. Stickers were something that I loved when I was a kid. So I was doing something that was very literal, a literal thing that I enjoyed back then. So revisiting all of that was just Fucking brilliant. Oh my God. Buying cutesy stationery and just completely indulging myself, bringing me so much joy as an adult. But little Susie was just beside herself. She's like, Yeah, what are all the things? So, I mean, so I bought all the things and we had a blast in lockdown making this tarot journal. So, from there, the relationship has been developing. And it's not that it changes because Pixie Susie kind of remains the same age, you know, but I will journal to her. I'm very aware of her around me. She brought me the dolls, which was like a really joyful exploration for a while there. I still have them around me. You know, she lets me be playful. She lets me be not so serious, you know, like I've just turned 50. Like I'm pretty grown up, but the further away I get from my child self, the more connected I feel to my inner child. Because it's like in my 20s, so I've got to be terribly grown up because, you know, I'm doing journalism and, you know, I've got to be taken seriously. And now I just don't care. Now I, I'm going to do whatever I want because like, I'm, I'm a grown up person and I'm free to do what I want and what brings me joy and what feels true. So what feels true to me is this joy in stationery and 
colour and creativity and because, fuck, life is hard enough, you know. Like, my cat got diagnosed with cancer last year and that was pretty grim. You know, I don't have kids. She is my everything. Um, And having that connection to Susie really helped because when I'm soothing her, I'm, I'm, I'm able to put it into words. And obviously by doing that, I'm soothing myself. So there's an element of reparenting going on, you know, because I look after her. Clearly, I'm looking after myself. And it's just like a really lovely energy. Um, I just was really happy. Yeah. No, yeah. I, 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 really happy. I I love it. You know, I mean, I, I, I know you, you know, um, talked about it in your Inside Story course. And that's kind of the first time. Oh, God, yeah. I, you know, I, I spent some time with that, even though, you know, I've also done quite a bit of therapy. And I remember one therapist said the whole, you know, there is actually a, an approach, you know, where you have your child and your adult and your parent, you know, that like that triangle, all of that, yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah. And um, but again, you know, I, I really think, you know, this is everyone would benefit from that. Everyone, you know, because we all. I mean, you know, it's growing up. I mean, we grow up, we mature, we learn things, we fuck up, and we, um, oh, I've just said their foot. <laughs> Thank God, because I've said it like 50 times. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's funny. You I, I, it in. <laughs> I, um, I, I don't know why, you know, I I don't, uh, well, I don't know. My husband might disagree, you know, that um, I, I do say it sometimes, you know. And anyway, but, you know, so there is, I, I mean, I, like you, I mean, I love this age, actually, you know, because I feel it really does feel like a lot of stuff is just coming together. It's falling into place and having the awareness around things, you know, like the ADHD or like, like for me, for instance, also what's been mind blowing actually uh, this last year is human design. I really got into that, you know, and it's like, it really is like, it's explained my whole life to me, you know, and um, uh, yeah. So and I think, you know, yeah, I mean, we don't want to do like all navel gazing and all that stuff, but that's not necessarily what it's about. You know, this is just about understanding and um, and then finding ways, you know, to, you know, to, to not to function, but to but to just be in this world, you know, yeah. in, in a way that is you know, positive and nice and calm and helpful and, 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 and all. So, yeah, so that we can feel good and people around us can feel good and, yeah. you know, and, it's and being in, invested in your own well being because we're the ones that are responsible for that. Yeah. You know, we want to think it's our partner, it's our siblings, it's our kids. It's not. We are responsible for our own well being. And if we can tend to that and look after ourselves, yeah. then we don't pass on shit to other people you know if we can be responsible for our own well-being and our own mental health and our own like happiness is such an ephemeral thing but contentment, yeah. contentment is lovely yeah. you know joy from simple things it doesn't have to be complicated but yeah but and also if everyone in the world could learn how to reparent themselves it you know the whole world would change the whole world would change if we could look after that hurt little boy, little girl, that hurt child who could maybe was non-binary and didn't know how to say it, maybe wanted a different experience and wasn't able to say it, maybe was shunned, was shamed. You know, there is, there's so much. And that little person is still in us. And then we put on this big suit, you know, and we go out into the world, but we're still carrying all of that. But then we, we've got all these coping mechanisms that we think work, but then you get into a fight and then someone kicks off a war in another country and it's like why are you doing that is there a little boy in you who needs to be looked after because there probably is you know which is so such a simplification but I really think it yeah. you know like if we could all like just tend to the wounded part once you are with them and they feel comforted and seen you get a bit of the pixie energy coming out or however your inner child wants to express themselves. You know, Susie is very cheeky. You know, she's obviously got ADHD, of course, but you know, she can be quite cheeky and quite sassy and I love her to bits. And I'm talking about something imaginary. <laughs> My inner child, I mean, it doesn't really exist. It does fucking exist. It does. She is so real to me. 
um, and bringing her into my business. I think, what did I call it in the inside story? She's like my director of play. You know, if I'm going to do anything serious and I don't do that much serious stuff in my business on purpose, you know, there's going to be stickers on it. I'm doing it in pink, pink, pink ink. You know, this, I want my business to feel, and I say this in the course, to feel like a shawl, yeah. not a straight jacket. So, and I will let go of anything that doesn't feel in alignment with that. I mean, obviously I still have to do my receipts for my bookkeeper and pay tax and you know, I'm a responsible human, but I'm not going to do stuff if it doesn't feel right. I'm not going to send 50 emails when I'm launching a new course. That's not an <laughs> alignment. God for me. that. <laughs> you know, it's like when that happens, I'm going to unsubscribe. You know, that does that. And I know me and I know the people in my audience. I know them really, really well because so many of them have been with me for so long. You know, like I, if it doesn't feel good to me, then I'm not going to inflict it on someone else. And that's kind of the rule for the whole of my business. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and yeah. totally. That's, and, and that's what I always say as well. Hey, if you don't like, you know, like people sometimes ask me, well, so how many emails or how many nurture emails should I send? You know, and I say, well, when you sign up to someone's list of freebie or whatever, well, what feels comfortable to you? You know, like when yeah. they give you three, does that feel good? If you get six or seven, does that start to feel like too much? Well, yeah. that, you know, so listen to yeah. yourself, you know, be guided by how you, you know, feel about things. And that's how you want to be in the world, you know, and, and, and it's okay, you know, and you can still have a successful business by having, oh, a business that yeah. fits, you know, who you are and how you do things best. And, you know, and I think in some ways, you know, if like with ADHD, you've had to do that all your life, you know, you've had to find a way to, to work and do things that fit with with who you are, you know, and yeah. and I feel, you know, like now talking so much more about it, even the whole like neurotypical, neurodiverse, I have a feeling we all have, I mean, there isn't a typical actually, there is no typical, you know, there is, yeah. yes, our constructions, our, 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 our systems, patriarchy, matriarchy, I mean, all of those things, but there's just humanity, you know, and, and, and that is really, I feel we are opening something up here that... Well, it's, it's like society seems to, patriarchal society is always trying to make us into this binary thing. Yeah. There's men, there's women. Well, that's it. Well, that's not true. You know, there's one thing or there's another thing. You're married or you're Black single. or white. Yeah. 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 It's that this or that. And it's like, well, yeah, but it's not. It's like a spectrum, everything. You're straight, you're gay. Well, that's it. It's like, no we're so much more complex than that there are so many more layers and I think it was easy to try and fit humans into a box so it's like well you've got God or you're a heathen you know it's like you're one or the other mate like choose a side it's like no there aren't any sides it's it, but that was easier to control people if you're fitting in one or the other you know it's why we um have to go to school and learn in a certain way and because you're gonna let's get them all ready to go and work in the factories and you can see all these layers invented mainly by men over the centuries you know it's just it's all impacted us and now but look what's happening now i mean there are a lot of bad things about the internet um and don't get me started in on ai and how how it's making the internet into this homogenized bland nothingness but now we can share all this information and that's really powerful. I would never have known it. Susanna in the eighties would never have known reading her, my guy magazine, just 17 magazine. There wouldn't have been an article in there about ADHD. You know, there was no information. And now we've gone from burning bras to all the way over here where we're like, actually guys or girls or people, you know, there, there's so much more magic than we've been taught, you know, there's just, it's just, it's just, I haven't got the words, it's amazing. Yeah. And we true. don't need to stamp out anything that's different, yeah. actually just embrace, because we're all a bit different, if only we could take the time to find out what that is. Yeah, yeah, okay? um, and and, and I, I agree, you know, I think the internet, for all the terrible stuff, you know, and like, don't get me started on the silos and all the political shit and all that. 
you know, but there's also such great opportunity and such, I mean, connections. I mean, you know, like the fact that you and I can just talk now and we're in totally different countries and continents. And, you know, and we both have made real life friends, you know, through the internet. I mean, I've met people who have would have never met otherwise, you know, and you can kind of like meet your people and your tribe or however you want to call it. But yeah, and uh, that's, I love the internet for that. You know, yeah. and, and me too, you know, or staying connected even like with family, you know, because I mean, my family's in Germany, but I regularly, I, I FaceTime with my dad every week, you know, and my nephew will FaceTime me and he hasn't seen me in like eight years, you know, but he still knows totally who I am, you know, and he FaceTimes me too regularly. And so there's so much positive stuff, you know, and, and, and I really feel like, you know, embracing, you know, how, how we are individual, how we're different, but also how we still come together as a community, because ultimately, we still want to be in community, we need community, you know, we need other people, but how we move in those communities. And that's why, you know, like with the labels, on some hand, on one hand, I, I would love to get rid of some labels like, you know, gay, female, male, and all of those things, you know, because yeah. none of that matters, you know, because what matters is you're a human being, you have desires, you have needs. Are you a good person or are you a bad person? You know, that's almost like, you know, very simplistic, but that's really what it comes down to for me. Yeah. You know, that's all I care and, about. You know, I don't really. And don't cause any harm. Exactly. You know, like t tend to your stuff, yeah. heal it, yeah. sort it out, and 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 let people do what they need to do. You know, I hate to see when they're you mustn't do that and you shouldn't do that and that shouldn't be. But but who are you to say? But it's not hurting you. Why are you trying to dictate what other people do? It's like look after that little person inside you who is scared or feeling threatened or. What is that? And bring and look at that. I mean, I do. I'm a <clears throat> big fan of the navel gazing. <laughs> you know, like heal your stuff. I know. Well, you don't inflict it on everyone else. So important. Yeah, and healing. I mean, healing is such a. Yeah, I mean that is another like big thing, you know, and and so um, important, you know, and uh, yeah, I mean, wow, <laughs> we could keep talking ever about all because, of this stuff you know because you also we start in one place and then we go to another you know and it's all connected and well uh, it's not business is life you know business yeah. is I'm, I'm running this business but this is also how I live my life it's it's the same yeah you know when I make my courses I don't I'm not separate from them actually I put all of myself into them that's probably maybe why people like them because it's all me there's no formula you know, it's. It, I will never get anyone else to write my stuff. For example, this is also part of having a smaller business. I don't want a copywriter. You know, I'm never going to use AI to write something. Like it's only going to come out of my fingertips. So, and and do you know what? That's all I have. When you look at all the businesses and all the successful people, all I have is me. You know, is my way, my flavor. That's the only and uh, unique thing I have, really. There are plenty of courses out there about photography and journaling. You know, there are books about the inner child. You're like, no one really needs me to add my penny. But I know there's someone out there who does want to, who, who learning it or experiencing it through my lens helps them get it, Absolutely. you know. And so, and being of service in that way and teaching, I never knew that it would be so rewarding and amazing. You know, I could never have guessed well, I mean, look, look at me. I mean, what you have done has changed my life, you know, and it has changed my business because I'm, you know, like you, I mean, my business is me and vice versa, you know, and so it has had a big impact, you know, and, uh, and isn't that like wonderful? You know, and just by my being you, just by you being you. <laughs> my work here is done. Yeah, but it's great. But also internet and teaching and as women, we are able to have more power and more, you know, we, we were able to build these businesses that, you know, I, that couldn't have happened for my mum. Actually, my mum did have her own business, but not at this level, you know, like the internet has really empowered us to do so much more, what for the individual, but 
um, I identify as a woman. So that is my experience. And yeah, it's, I'm able, and I'm, and I'm a single woman. I'm choosing to do life solo. So, and I'm able to live in London and pay my bills and I'm doing okay, you know, and 20 years ago, even maybe 30 years ago, that wouldn't have been possible. So yeah, I'm grateful for the internet. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's really changed, changed lives, you know, and, and it really, you know, and I, I, and I do love, you know, that we can have these businesses that actually are, you know, how often people talk about the life b- work balance and all that, you know, but for me, like for you, it's all kind of one, but I actually love that about it. You know, I do not want to, you know, like, uh, shut down my computer and then leave, leave and, and leave it all behind and all this. No, I mean, it's all fluid. It's all together. You know, I do not want to, uh, oh yeah, you know, you, you start uh, building this team and then have people do what you do so that, you know, you can just take a step back from it all and uh, let others oh. do the work. And I, I don't want that. You know, I love what I do. I love that I can do this and I love that I can make money with it and actually, you know, um, support our life with it too, you know, and how amazing is that, you know, and... Um... It's pretty amazing. Yeah, no, I'm the same. I, I find it very hard to switch off, but, well, no, I find it hard to switch off in a neurotypical way. So <laughs> what what I now understand, because I'm always like, I'm always going to be burnt out or I'm just, I do too much. But no, the way I work is I will do something obsessively for a week, but then I can have some easy breezy you know, brain fuzzy days. And that's okay too, because I'm not doing, it can only be Monday to Friday. It can only be between these hours. I mean, luckily I don't have kids. I'm not tied to the school schedule. So, you know, I can sort of work into the night if I want, but I I find it really hard to rest. This is my current thing. Rest. What is rest? What does that mean? And I've, I've figured out that, well, the whole resting as an idea of doing nothing I can't do that. That's like torture. That's torture for my brain. Equally, I don't want to be out a million, doing a million things either. So rest for me is slower. It could be journaling. It could be, you know, binging Buffy if I need to binge something, but it could also just be going to see a friend or maybe just sending three days obsessively making a website or just allowing my brain to do what it needs to do. But if I have, if I'm forced to lie down and rest, I can't do it. I, I want, I want to be here. I'm the I want, same. I want to be touching I'm, things. And, I know. And, yeah, I, know. I, can't, I can't rest. So I have to actively rest yeah. or yeah. do what, what, just power down a little bit yeah. because I can never fully power down completely. Yeah. It's the same with my laptop. It's never fully off. Yeah. Um, and that's my brain. And now I am informed and, and have that information, I can make allowances for that. Yeah. So I don't always feel that I'm doing things wrong. Or, you know, again, the neurotypical advice, this is how I filter things now. Is that the neurotypical, as in, I'm not trying to make it binary, but, you know, is that if you're more on that side of, you know, not crazy brain like I am, and I, I say that lovingly, um, is that why that doesn't work for me? You know, and I'm like, okay, copy that. I don't, that's not going to work. And I now know, like I said, it's very empowering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, so I, thrilled with my diagnosis. Ah, uh, um, you know, I, I don't say that every day, but at least three times a week, I say to my sister, oh my God, I uh, hate it. But the, the, the good bits are really pretty good, actually. I, I just think I'd be so boring if I didn't have it. I really do. I think I see how it is. What are you saying? Neurotypical people are boring? Well, exactly. Oh, one or the other. No, (laughs) you know what I mean. For me, I see see how it is so woven into me. You know, I'm like, oh, okay. I see it in my sister. We are both very funny together. (laughs) You know, you you know the Conway sisters are there, but then we'll get, we'll burn ourselves out in an hour. They're like, okay, bye. We've got to go. But meanwhile, we're tap dancing. So yeah, it's it's I don't know, it's it still surprises me. I still can't believe it. And I'm like, wow, that's so funny. I mean, <laughs> to me, it often feels actually now when when I see people talk about, you know, their neurodiversity and all the quirks and all this, you know, 
And I, I just think, yeah, I love it because you know what? It's interesting. It gives flavor. It gives color. It gives, you know, life, you know, and, and, yeah. and in a way, you know, because it's not dull and boring and just like a straight path and, and all of that, you know? So, um, I think it I, makes I, me a better teacher as well. Oh, yeah. I think I'm, I'm, I don't like doing things live. That's why I didn't want to do, um, a live thing with you because oh, the, the, the webinar thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's an important part of the whole wanting calm business. I want to do things that are in alignment with how I work best. And I think I'm better pre-recorded. I think I teach better that way. When I do things live, like I'll do a Zoom in the Inside Story or I'll do Zooms in my journal love club, but those are quiet. We're quietly journaling. That's fine. But when I've done them in the Inside Story, I get very hyper and I'm talking fast and I'm thinking fast and it's, it's, it works, but it's it's stressful. And it's not stressful as in, oh, no, I can't. It's not anxiety making. It's just a lot of stressing on my body. Um, and I find it a bit overwhelming in that way. So it, I think my brain works better when I can have a little bit more thought and I can make my notes, pre-record the videos. A lot of them I will still be riffing and I will have very short notes if I'm doing a slideshow, just very short little bullet points and then I will riff, but it means that I can go off in different directions. And then I, and then in the edit, I piece it all together into what I hope is coherent and useful and, and worth paying the money for. But if I was to do it live, I would go off on too many tangents and get too hyper. And I'm, I'm a better teacher pre-recorded, a better teacher in the written word. And so knowing that again, really useful. And I can shape my offerings in that way. And I think because my brain does the jumping around thing, I think I'm better at um, explaining concepts or bringing things to life because I'm doing this all the time. And and that's part of what I think makes me a good teacher. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 <laughs> I think. Yeah. No, you are. I mean, you are a wonderful teacher, actually. You know, so, you know, I, I and again, you know, you, you, you touch on I mean, that's like the red thread through everything knowing who you are, knowing how you work best, you know, and whether that's because you have ADHD or because of something else, but just having that insight, you know, and then because that's the thing, you know, everyone out there, you know, they teach us this and that, you know, and here are my secrets and here are, you know, oh. like the 10 ways, you know, that you have to do this and here's my formula and no, no, you know, I mean, just really take the time to get to know yourself, to get to know how you work best, you know, and and then just ignore all this noise and and all of that, you know, and just you know put put your business blinders on, as I always say, you know, and and yeah. stay on your own path. And and well, I, think it, I think it takes it takes a minute to get there. To be fair, um, yes. when I started, I like I said, I bought that course. I wasted a thousand dollars on a course I didn't take because it wasn't the right fit. I think you have a few of those purchases and think, oh, okay, that was a waste of money. And you but try you, things, you know. It's normal. At the beginning, you're like, well, I want to do this right. And everyone is telling me that the right way is, is their way or that way, or I've got to do it. That. Okay, cool. And I think you try it on. And then hopefully, because building a business is basically a personal development journey, you get to the point, hopefully soon, where you're like, hang on, no, oh, no, that doesn't work for me. And then hopefully you give it a try doing it your way. And I think maybe the, another important thing to remember is that we're all just making it up. Like I'm making it up there. I have to pay my tax bill. Like that's not a made up thing. Okay. We've all agreed that we all pay tax and cool. But when it comes to making an e-course, I'm making that shit up completely from scratch with the power of my brain. And <laughs> that's what I did at the beginning that's what I'm still doing now. And now I've sort of created my own formula that I want it to be this shaped and I'm going to maybe have that many lessons. And But even in that, I've been evolving it each year. Like before 2020, none of my courses had videos. And yet since then, we're through the power of my inner child, when she said, well, we've got to do this course on video, I'm now using video loads. And I switched all my courses to Kajabi. So I'm using a different platform. Um, and that's really opened things up. And so I'm constantly evolving with what I feel my skills are. I am mean, obviously constantly learning how to do things, learning how to edit a video. And it's never perfect. 
but I love finding new ways to to bring what I'm trying to teach or to bring it to life. And like I said, I'm never going to stand on a stage and do it or teach live. I'm never going to do group coaching. That's not my, my best skill, but I will make you videos and you will feel like you're here with me right now. Absolutely. And that's how I can teach and share. So videos really brought my stuff to life, um, which is great. And that's like, that was only a few years ago. So, and before then, everything worked really well as well. But I think, I mean, you've done both inside stories. The first one, I think, was quite dry compared to what I created in the, the newer version. And actually, I get quite a lot of satisfaction from remaking my courses, you know, and updating them and bringing something new in. And I'm, I'm, I am really, I do really enjoy that. I mean, it's exhausting and I get really obsessed and burn myself out, but it's worth it. It's worth all of that energy I put into it because I'm like, oh, this is this is the best it can be for where I am today, you know. And that's I really like that. So yeah, happy to make all the slideshows and videos and yeah, yeah. And and I I love it, you know, and I love seeing the evolution, you know. And I think I mean anyone who's listening to this, if you are still listening after all this time, you know, uh be okay with where you are in your journey, you know, and, and just kind of be there, learn what you can, feel out how you work best, try things. You know, I'm a big fan of experimentation. I mean, that's when I decided to only do courses, that was an experiment, you know. I mean, it was at the beginning of 2019, and I said, I cannot do both web design and courses anymore, but web design still actually earned me more money than my courses. And I said, okay, 12 months. I'm giving myself 12 months to just do courses, and then I'll revisit, you know, and maybe go back to web design. And it all worked out, you know, but experiment, you know, try things and, uh, yeah, you know, I, and and uh, and that's part of the fun as well, you know, because we learn, we evolve. And I actually, I get a lot of satisfaction now. I mean, I'm in my eighth year, no, I'm actually, yeah, I'm in my eighth year now, I think, eighth or ninth year, actually. Um and I really love, I feel like things are coming together. I feel more confident in certain areas, you know, and I certainly know how I like to do things. And I like to improve upon that and to evolve and to keep learning. And, but it feels good, you know, it really feels like my business is my best friend, you know, and, and it's, um, it's just so amazing, you know, and, and, uh, before we stop, and I have to, unfortunately, because we're like, uh, uh, well, not really running out of time. We don't really have a time limit as such, you know, but there are no rules. We can do what we exactly, want. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I really want to know what is next for Susanna. What is next? Oh, gosh. Lots of things. Um, well, looking after Baba, my cat, that's number one at the moment. So I look after her. She's, she seems well but I might, or a lot of my energy is with her. Um, and then I have a new course that I'm working on. I'm currently enrolling Journal Love Club. And then next month, I don't know when this is going to come out, but in June, I will be enrolling Loving Little You, which is going to be my new inner child course. I've got the tarot inner child course, but I know a lot of people aren't too bothered about tarot. So I'm doing it without tarot. And it's and actually, I made the Terra Fuel Inner Child, I think that was in 2021. Well, I've got a couple of years on that now. So I've got, I've, oh man, I've got so many ideas. I'm going to need to pace myself. But yeah, it's going to be juicy. Let's put it that way. I've got, oh, but I have so many notebooks that are filled and so many notion pages and ah, it's, I can't wait. So yeah, so that's where the next chunk of energy is going is loving little you. Um, and then I've got plans for the inside story. I'm going to probably run that one more time. And then I'm highly recommended, by the way, guys, I mean, you know, no, I'm just saying to, to the people. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do, I'm gonna do it one more time, one more time self-study. And then I want to chunk it up and create workshops from it. Yeah. Um, the only thing with the inside story is when I initially made it, the first version, I had people asking me about online business. And this was like eight years ago. And I think now there are some really excellent courses out there. You know, it's it's a big industry. And where I think my teaching would be better is rather than have this whole, you know, this is all about everything I did in my business so far. 
I'd rather narrow in on like how to make an e-course, how to write online. Um, and I think I want to do a workshop about ADHD and business, not because I'm an expert, but because I've built a business for the last 14 years with ADHD. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to show what I've been doing and and what and now the, as I'm connecting the dots. So I think those three would actually be more of service than just the general um, inside story. And this is this is again the nice thing about what we do. We can change, we can pivot. With the inside story, there are pieces of it, a couple of modules that I would want to update. And to the point where I'm like, well, do I want to do that or do I just want to change the format completely? So, and I'm like, well, I can because it's my business. So I think that's what I'd like to do. Um, and I'm, and recently I launched my first workshop. So it's like a lower price thing. I know, it's it. <laughs> Yeah, but it but it was really fun to make that because I'm still yeah. used to making like a six week course. To make a a, a a a workshop was really I really enjoyed it. So I'm like, oh, cool. So making different things, different ways to experience my work and different price points, like all of that. I just I just want to help. I want to pay my rent and I want to help. Yeah. That's it. So that's what's coming. Loving Little You, new incarnation of the inside story. Um, and then in the next, within two years, I want to move, which is going to be huge. Yes. Move out of London. To the sea. Big life change. To the sea. Yeah. But I need a, I need a run up to it. It's There's a lot of pieces I have to put into place for that. So and that feels really overwhelming because, of course, I'm already thinking of the millions of things. Is that, no, 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 bring it back in. It's because I know, bring it back in. What do I need to do this week? So, okay, because I am multi-level thinking. So annoying. So, yeah, so loving little you. I can't oh. wait. There is a little pixie inside me going, come on. <laughs> you know, she's so excited. So everyone's going to meet Susie again. But with all the things we've been learning and like meet our inner teen, meet our young adult. Oh, my God, I've got so many things I want to bring in. So, yeah, it's going to be good, I hope. That's it. Oh, but it will be. I look forward to it. It will be, but you never know. I look forward to it. I might make a dud and it might happen. So, <laughs> uh, Well, well, I don't know. I think there are people who... I mean, I, I don't know, you know, it's I, I've so far, I mean, everything you've done has just been wonderful, you know, and there's always something that resonates and that I learn, you know, because because you are being you, you know, so your people will always resonate with what you do, you know, and oh, thank uh, you. I mean, you know, uh, you could teach how to make cheese. I would probably take that course too. Oh, uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, but I love anyway. it. And I'm so grateful for everyone who buys my stuff because I've got the loveliest yeah. people on my bus. Oh, my God. Nietzsche and I say it all the time. You know, I get the loveliest replies to my newsletter and all my students are just like, how did I get so lucky? You know, like, I just slipped into the right little corner of the internet and and found my people. So, yeah, never, ever have I taken that for granted. Just, and some of them are friends now, you know, like pretty much everyone I know in my life yeah. I met through, through this. So, yeah. Actually, I think that from, I think now that I think about it, all the other interviews I've done so far, I think we're all insiders or we're all... You know, I mean, I have met so um, many people through Inside Story, actually, and friends, you know, and it's just been amazing. That first iteration was really powerful, I think. You know, it was not a perfect course. It was, you know, I mean, now I look at it, I'm like, well, oh, to be could, honest, I, I, I don't oh, could have done better. But I don't but even think I something. all the lessons yeah. in it, actually, you know, because I don't always finish everything I, I, I do. Oh, I never do. Yeah. And but I I took just enough, you know, and it just was enough to take me there. And the, the value was the group, actually. The yeah. group was yeah. just phenomenal, you know. Yeah. And and we still are there, you know. I mean, we're still inside us are still out there, you know. So yeah. um, it was a it was a thing. It was a yeah. thing. But I had that with unraveling as well. I know there are people that took that in two thousand nine that are still friends. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. Dude, so, that wasn't me. I just yeah. I just held the container and everyone jumped in. Yeah. So. so. Yeah. Uh, Susanna, thank you so much. It has thank been absolutely you. amazing. Um, I don't think I'm going to edit anything, really. Um, oh, my God. You might have to edit some bits. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe the bit <laughs> where my microphone stopped working. <laughs> so. <laughs>
but uh, I'm going to stop the recording now. So thank you, everyone. I'm going to have links in the in the notes, uh, you know, to everything that Susanna does. And uh, thank you. So let me just stop this.